Hello and welcome to a digital lecture for Salt Lake Community College. This lecture will be the first to cover section 5.7 for Intro to Statistics, concerning difference of two proportions. What we're going to go through first are the conditions necessary for the sampling distribution of p hat sub 1 minus p hat sub 2 to be normal. These are the same three conditions that we have been using for confidence intervals for quite some time. All we need to make sure is that we also relate it to the fact that we're dealing with two different proportions as well. First we have that the data comes from a random sample or a randomized experiment. Secondly, we have that each proportion separately follows a normal model, which means that n times p hat and also n times 1 minus p hat are both at least 10 for each sample which means we would do the same thing for each sample and proportion for each of those groups. And thirdly, we also want to make sure that the two samples are independent of each other. So long as we have these three conditions, then we can work with confidence intervals. The standard error of the difference of the sample proportions is shown below, with this formula of the standard error being the square root of the standard error for the first proportion squared plus the standard error for the second proportion squared all under a square root. Now we can do this by hand however we are most commonly going to be using some more statistical processes using GeoGebra which you will see in the next example. Note that p sub 1 and p sub 2 represent the population proportions and n sub 1 and n sub 2 represent the sample sizes. The rest of this page de details how you would use GeoGebra to solve these kinds of problems, in which case I recommend watching the GeoGebra video to get more of an in-depth discussion about how to do this as well as the example below it. However, the following example on the next page I'm going to work on and I will also be using GeoGebra to solve that. We have here that researchers investigated this question with a sample of 20 penguins near Antarctica. All these penguins had already been tagged with RFID chips, and the researchers randomly assigned 10 of them to receive a metal band on their flippers in addition to the RFID chip. The other 10 penguins did not receive a metal band. Researchers then kept track of which penguins survived for the 4.5 year study and which did not. They found that 9 of the 20 penguins survived, which I'm going to already fill in the table here. We have 9 total survivors, of which 3 of those survivors had a metal band. So I'm going to put 3 here, and 6 did not. And that does add up to 9, so the row total checks out. To finish up the rest of this table, since we have 6 without a metal band and 10 total did not have a metal band, that means 10 minus 6 is 4. 4 of those likely did not survive. And then of the 10 that did have a metal band, we know 3 survived, which means the other 7 did not. Total row for that row is 11, and 9 plus 11 equals 20, so our row totals check out. On the right side here, we have a few probabilities. We have the probability of survived given no metal band, or on the condition of having no metal band. That means of the 10 individuals with no metal band, how many survived, which is 6 out of 10, or 0 0.6. For those that survived given metal band, we then have those 10 individuals with a metal band, how many of them survived. Of the 10 individuals with the metal band, we have 3 that survived, so 0 0.3. And for the difference of the two proportions, 0 0.6 minus 0 0.3 gives us 0 0.3. The fact that it is positive and I subtracted using the top value, subtracting the second value, since it is positive, that means it is more in favor for those that survived with no metal band rather than those that survived with a metal band. What we're going to do now that we have these two different proportions is compute and interpret a 95% confidence interval 
for the difference between proportions of penguins who survive with a band and without a band. To do this, I, as I said earlier, I'm going to switch over to GeoGebra. And I'm going to go to the Statistics tab and select the option for Z Estimate Difference of Proportions. We already have a 0 0.95 for confidence interval, so I don't need to change that. However, for the first sample, we have for successes, we have six out of 10. And for the second sample, we have three out of 10. That gives our successes and uh, the sample size for each samples the standard error, as well as the lower and upper limit for the confidence interval, negative 0 0.1158 and 0 0.7158. I'm going to go ahead and copy that over to our page here, negative 0 0.1158 to 0 0.7158. Now when we interpret this, we're going to interpret it like we typically do for confidence intervals. We're going to say that we are blank percent confident that the interval contains the value we're looking for. In this case, we would say that there is a 95% confidence, because we did a 95% confidence interval, that the interval itself captures the difference between proportions. Pay careful note that you note that we have a difference between proportions. We're not just looking for a single proportion within that range. Now, based on that confidence interval, I'm going to say here that the two proportions are not significantly different. How do I know that? Well, the info below is going to detail how we interpret these confidence intervals for difference of proportions. If zero is inside of the interval, that means the lower bound and the upper bound capture the value of zero. That means proportions are not significantly different. That is the case in this example. We have a negative 0 0.1158 to 0 0.7158. That means zero itself is between that. If you see a negative up to a positive for a confidence interval, that means zero has to be contained in there. If zero is outside of the interval, which means that both your bounds for the interval are either both negative or both positive, then that means proportions are significantly different. If the entire interval is negative, so a negative bound up to another negative bound, that means P1 is smaller than P2. And if the entire interval is positive, P1 is larger than P2. The reason for that is because when we look at the difference of proportions, we are specifically looking at the difference of P1 minus P2, as discussed earlier. If we get a negative number from this difference, that means that the second number has to be bigger than the first. That is how you get a negative number when you subtract two things. The second value is larger. If the entire value is positive, then that means this difference more weighs towards P sub 1 rather than P sub 2. If you take a difference of two values and you get a positive number, that means the first value was bigger. If you have any further questions, be sure to review the example videos or ask your instructor.